All right, Bob Quinn says he's 100% behind Matt Patricia in light of a lot of the stories that are starting to come out from former players like Quadre Diggs, Glover Quinn, Darius Slay, even going back to some undrafted rookie tight end name who I can't remember. Um, you know, even outside voices that have talked about the Lions organization and not wanting to be there like Richard Sherman, other guys like the other tight end, Akeem Vallis, Chase, B- I mean, uh, was it Chase Billingsley? the old receiver that was here um, that's been talking about how, you know, arrogant, how, you know, trash the organization is under these, under this regime. So let's talk about it. We back. Mercy Sports Talk. We in the building. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And um, I linked the article for 97 Wanted Ticket. Today, Bob Quinn had a, a virtual conference call with a lot of the Lions media. All right, he talked about the number three pick. It's just nothing, nothing that you already don't know. You know they're looking to trade down and, you know, this stuff of that nature, man. So, um, but the, the great thing, what the most polarizing thing today was about how he got Patricia's back through all this stuff. He said he hasn't talked about it a ton. So he hasn't, at least to our knowledge, talked to Matt Patricia about the pushback. You know, he's not going to tell Matt how to do his job. He's not going to tell Matt that he needs to adjust his coaching style. You know what? What they did, he said they got players that want to be here. He said a number of the free agents called the Lions about playing here to play with Matt Patricia. Do I believe that? Probably so. I can see Jamie Collins calling here wanting to come back and play for Patricia. His best years was with Patricia, you know. I can see Danny Sheldon calling here because he had no place to go in the league. Saying, hey, I see I got rid of Harrison. I want to come here. But, you know, as far as popular opinion around the league, you know, Patricia name tastes like shit when you speak it. Okay, that's just what it is. You know, it ain't like he brought in some type of top free agent like he brought in. I don't know who was out there. Um, you know, whoever, a top guy that was out here this free agent, period, that, that people really, really, you know, wanted. He didn't go out there and get James Bradbury. OK, he didn't go out there and get a big name receiver. He didn't go out there and get a big name defensive tackle. You know, the, the, the Reed character from Seattle or he didn't go out there and get anybody that's going to change life in Detroit. So for you to say, oh, Deron uh, Harmon wanted to come to Detroit, he was excited. I've never seen somebody so excited on FaceTime to be coming to Detroit. OK, is he going to come here and change life? No, he's a special teams player. Desmond Trufant, oh, he said he had a lot of respect for Matt Patricia. Well, he don't know Matt Patricia, right? But then again, you know, what is he going to say getting tra- getting uh, uh, all the money from the land- from the Lions? Probably no other team was out there going to offer Desmond Trufant that amount of money but the Lions. <laughs> so what is he supposed to say? So it ain't like they went out there and got, you know, some great, great players, free agents-wise, that's going to turn this team around. What you done was Matt Patricia didn't like the three super the three star players he had on defense or two of them. He didn't like, well he didn't like Glover, he didn't like Quadre, he didn't like Darius, so he got rid of him. So Matt, Matt, Matt Patricia has to have Bob Quinn support. They are joint at the hip. They are joint at the hip. And not to discuss it with him. Of course, if they did discuss it, you think, oh, Matty P. And old Bob Quinn is going to say, oh, I had a conversation with, uh, you know, Bob Quinn about this. And we no, no. And if they haven't had that conversation, Bob Quinn is an idiot. Because this man's <laughs> this man's job that he does as, as a coach, it depends if you're going to get another uh, GM job. It depends on if you're going to stay in Detroit and keep cashing Martha's checks. So you got to sit there and tell them, like, man, you got to change something up. But you know what? Instead of changing stuff up, a change, instead of being flexible, you know, instead of, you know, showing that you can't be multidimensional as a head coach. What they do, they get rid of their star players and bring in and bring in lesser players. That's basically what he said they did. We want players that want to be here. We're not going to change it up to make it a great environment for the players. We're not going to make this a great work environment. We're going to bring in guys that know what they expect from Matt Patricia, that know what he wants, that's going to do exactly what he said and nothing else and nothing more.
Nothing less and nothing more. That's what it said. He ain't changing. You know, and isn't it is it unfortunate? Absolutely. Because a great a great coach has to adapt, be able to adapt to when the NFL changes, you know, when it changes as far as it's changing with mobile quarterbacks, you can't have big slow linebackers no more. You gotta have linebackers that go sideline to sidelines that can cover, that can do it all. And also you have to have the ability to change and adjust to the personalities. This is no longer the eighties, the nineties. It ain't even the early 2000s. It's a different breed of, of player. You can't be all over here telling players to eat a dick. Stop sucking another man's dick. Can't do it. You can't be around here telling other players that this guy better than you, that guy better than you. You're not his father. You ain't Barry Sanders Sr. You ain't Barry Sanders' daddy when he kept telling Barry that you'll never be better than Jimmy Brown. It's a different dynamic. You're a white man in a predominantly black sport. Play a role. And Bob Queen, he can play the role and say, I'm not concerned about what's going on. I'm not concerned about this. I'm not concerned about that. I get you. I feel you. I 100% feel you, Bobby. But you will be concerned when your ass is out on the curve and you moving your stuff from Michigan back to Massachusetts. When you're going back to be the video editing guy or you're going back to your your your, your job with the, with, with the New England Patriots pushing papers and acting like you was a general manager. You brought this guy in. And what, did, what have you guys done? Instead of building on 9 and 7, you tear it down because players don't like the program. Because Matt Patricia refuses to adjust in scheme and in the locker room. And this ain't no, no things like, well, they not buying into the system. Matt Patricia never gave them a chance to buy into the system. Coming in, trying to, trying to be a dictator. Coming in, trying to, you know, crack the whip. This is not high school. This is not college. This is not Pop Warner. It's not Pal, buddy. The players should respect you coming in. He tried so hard to get these players respect. He tried so hard to break these guys like it's the military. It's not. He's a grown man that's making more money than you. Whether in most of them in Detroit or not, they still gonna be making more money than you. He can and Matt can lie. I mean, excuse me, Bob can lie all he wants to. He say, I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned. Um, we got players that want to be here. Yeah, and the players that want to be here ain't that good. And some of the players that still don't want to be here, I believe Matthew Stafford don't want to be here. Some of the stories about how Matt Patricia puts him in front of the team and chew him out, I don't believe he want to be here. You know, I don't believe Marvin Jones want to be here. Some talks about them getting rid of him because he was a problem in the locker room at one point. He was a vocal leader. You know what I'm saying? No, Danny Amendola probably got no other choice but to be here. If Kenny Galladay had it his way, Kenny Galladay would be able to walk and go to another team right now. The number of these players don't want to be here. But you know what? The guys that want to be here, you know, the, the Justin Coleman's, the Trey Flowers, you know, the Desmond Trufons, the Danny Sheldon's of the world, the Jamie Collins, the Reggie Raglins, you know, let's see how it works out. Let's see how it works out. Because there's no excuses this year. They should have been fired already in my opinion. But there's no excuses this year. Bob Quinn, y'all got y'all players. You had, what, four or five drafts in Detroit, whatever it is. After this draft, you got the players that you want. Let's see it happen next year. They favored to win three games. Two of them by one point. Another one 5.5 by five, by, by, by five and a half points over the Redskins. In a pick em game at home with Chicago. Dover and under six and a half. So since you got all the players you want, look at the defense. The safeties there's the corners there's the linebackers that's probably gonna start are guys they even re signed and brought in. The whole defensive line is theirs now. The offensive line is all theirs again. The tight ends are all theirs. The receivers are all theirs. The running backs are all theirs. Only thing that's not theirs is the quarterback, the long snapper, and a few other people. So, this is the season. But, hey, Mercy Sports Talk. I'll link the article from 97. One to take it in the description. Check it out. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. You can reach out to me there if you have a business question, inquiry, response, your video request. All the links in the description. Want to make a donation? PayPal, uh, Cash App there. Best way to donate, share the video, though. And uh, check out our podcast. Links in the description. We got two line podcasts already done in the piston. One time for the one time. Mercy 